Studies have shown athletes that have the highest release speed are gonna throw the furthest. So our first point of emphasis is the release speed. We have to have a high rate of speed at release. 75 to 90% of release speed is accomplished during the final phases of the throw, not at the beginning of the throw. That's one of the reasons why you wanna teach your athletes to be slower at the beginning and faster at the finish. With release angle, we wanna make sure we're driving the discus forward, a little bit of upward tilt on the front edge of the discus as we drive it out into the sector. For beginners, we're definitely focused on just a little bit of upward tilt in the discus, try to keep it relatively flat at release. And the final factor, release height, that's another important factor in throwing the discus far. There's only so many things we can do about release height, but we can affect the release height by whether we reverse or not reverse. With the reverse, we try to get a little higher angle of release on the throw. With a no reverse, we're more concerned about a longer path of acceleration. There is disagreement whether to reverse or not reverse. I think you have to try both methods with your athletes and see what works best. We often do a lot of no reverse throws in our early training. So those are the three main factors when we're looking at the throw biomechanically, release height, release angle, and most importantly, release speed.